Now, I'd like to call upon uh, Mr. Deepak Pawa, Chairman, Pawa Group, and Managing Director of Briar Asia, to share his views. Uh, <clears throat> good morning, everyone. Uh, Dr. Uh, Rahul um, gave a very interesting scenario about where we could be headed, thousand to five thousand and whatever giga. And I'd like to start the session with uh, perspective and telescope it to where it was five years ago and where we started looking, when we as a country started looking at lithium batteries five years ago, and to see in those five years where we were then, what has happened and where we think we are headed. Five years ago, the total gigawatt installed globally was only 70, seven zero. Out of which 35 was in China alone, the rest was scattered in Korea, Japan, etc., and in other parts of the world. 50% in China, and all, had almost become a cottage industry. And we've been involved in China as a company for now more than 20 years. So we've seen, we've supplied equipment into the Chinese battery manufacturing facilities. And we've seen how it had mushroomed, and then suddenly the consolidation has started, and now the world suddenly wants to go battery, 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 I mean, lithium battery. Uh, I do believe that there will be an exponential growth. There may be commitments to have 1,000 gigawatts, but currently 1,000 gigawatts is not operating on the planet. That's my own personal perspective. America is putting up, US is suddenly accelerating, as Dr. Rahul mentioned, overtaking perhaps Europe because of various other geopolitical considerations. But things will change, and plants are yet to get off the ground. So many are in the planning, many are committed, but operational plants in the US and Europe are relatively few in the GEGA scale. So we are today going to talk about equipment and manufacturing process. Uh, I've broken up this topic of dry rooms into three parts, uh, low dew point humidifiers plus dry rooms and NMP recovery. Uh, because in this whole uh, uh, lithium ion production space, as I've made a slide which I'll show you, uh, everything stands on four legs. And so let's first start with the roadmap of development of lithium batteries. I think all of you are familiar. I'm not a technology expert. I only work on the area of environment control. But this is how it's been shaping up from 2017 and where we think it'll go in 2025. There are a lot of predictions, a lot of projections uh, that we will go towards solid state in five years' time. Some people think it will happen much later. Uh, but the world has moved quite a bit, particularly in China, on lithium-ion. And lithium-ion is also going to be strongly pursued in India. How quickly we will first establish lithium-ion and go towards other solid state, time will tell. But a lot is in the... Uh, crystallization stage, lots is happening in the world in terms of research and development. So put, to put things in perspective, if the total capacity was only 70 giga and you're planning to now look at several thousand giga, the number of people, scientists, material scientists, everyone working in the world to try and improve is tremendous. And so there is no clear-cut answer. It's known what is happening, but how it will evolve and how quickly it will evolve and change uh, I think we all have to be dynamic enough to understand and adopt to it from our own business point of view. Today I want to uh, stress on one item, which probably is a slide you may not have ever seen, but in the lithium battery production, there are, it is energy intensive. You must understand that. In the production side, and since our topic is manufacturing, so you, here you'll see that there are two major components of energy that are consuming the total operating uh, cost of production of a battery. One is dry room. What's a dry room? Dry room is the envelope within which you manufacture the battery. And the second is the drying. The drying is mainly concentrated on the 
production of the anodes and the cathodes and what you do to make the anode and cathode. The other manufacturing processes like notching, stacking, final sealing, others mixing, etching, is you can see minuscule compared to that. So every focus in the OPEX is what can I do to reduce the energy in order to uh, reduce the overall operating cost. So energy in dry rooms, which is the most significant user of energy, is the first item today people are looking at in Europe or in America when they're evaluating product and technology. Uh, other than the specification of holding load viewpoints. So keep this slide in your mind that we are really talking about half the energy production, half the energy used in the production of a lithium cell is concentrated in dry room. Some of you may be familiar with the term dry room, some may not be, but dry room plays a, therefore a very significant role. So here's an interesting slide I created. It just shows you four basic legs on which lithium ion battery production or lithium cell production stands on. On the right on the right hand side, you'll see various technology and providers of technology. There are many, there are many more. I may miss some, so apologies for that. And on the left hand side is an area which is called raw materials. And materials, as you've been hearing about, it goes beyond raw materials and the material sciences today is, is evolving very closely or very rapidly, and different types of uh, anode materials, cathode materials are going to be married, and you will see all that happening as a cross between the technology and the material sciences. Fortunately, India has very good material scientists. They're all scattered. There are many material scientists globally, Indian diaspora, also working on this area. I think we can pull in a lot together. However, there is nothing here anywhere to really orchestrate that. So because it's only five years ago that China was 35 giga and India was zero. No one even thought of this. But now that everyone started thinking of it, I think there is a great opportunity to try and bring all our knowledge together, which is there and scattered. And I have had a chance, fortunately, to speak to very good material people in the last two, three weeks. And the more I talk to them, I get the feel that we have something there, but we have to get our act together on the material sciences side and pull it all together, combining it with technology to make this in India uh, more self-reliant. The other leg that you see here is machinery. I'll speak a couple of words on this. Machinery starts with whatever mixers you're talking about, drying technology, you have filling machines, and the whole machinery line. If you look at uh, India, I think India can provide almost every bit of machinery by repurposing machines or equipment that they're already doing in the country. But there, there's really no one here who's taking the lead in a big way to get the machinery act together. Many people are saying, okay, I can make a mixer, I'll make it for this. I can make a drawing line, I can make it for this. But if you look at even the most advanced plants that are coming up in, in, in Europe, today they are relying on one or two major companies in China, not even Japan, not even Korea, in China to be able to furnish them the whole line. So I think here there is a big opportunity in India and I see that as a bigger gap than materials. I see there is a bigger gap than our dry room that I'll speak about, bigger gap than technology, is to bring all the equipment manufacturing somehow together by some companies in India taking a lead to really put together with knowledge a whole line together, especially by repurposing, importing a few, but being able to embed some of the technology within the lines. I think there are a few who are trying it, but they don't seem to have the financial muscle or otherwise to be able to do that. So a company like, let's say, CATL is putting up a plant in Germany or uh, Volkswagen, who we have been trying to work on a design, uh, they deselect a vendor. They are all looking at this one company in China to be able to give them the whole line, and they are committed to 2025. So even our companies, which are ambitious, under PLI scheme that they want to get their act together, want to put up a plant to giga level by 20, I mean, by do some level of localizing in 20, two years from now and another three years, get 60% localization. 
But if they still need the machinery for making the cells, there is nothing much happening in an integrated way in India on the machinery side. I see that as a big gap and would encourage anyone in the audience who has any interest uh, should look at that more actively. Then is the final leg, is the dry room. The dry room is the one in which you produce. Why it is critical is like you can produce the best of aircraft, but if your undercarriage is faulty, every time you'll crash land. So this is where the dry room plays a very, very significant role. It's not fully understood, it's misunderstood. It's not a simple room, and they are familiar with clean rooms. Everyone who makes a clean room cannot make a dry room. Dry room is a hermetically sealed envelope within which you have to maintain very, very low dew point. And these low dew points are very necessary for various reasons. Someone attributed, uh, what do you call, um, uh, disasters, explosive disasters to contaminants. But one of the major reasons also is, and significantly is, the moisture control that you have in the space when you produce the lithium ion cell. Any moisture that gets trapped is a source of uh, potential hazard. And that is the reason why it's very critical to maintain a dew point. As you progress towards uh, more advanced technologies than just lithium ion, your demands for low dew point in the room go from minus 40 to minus 55, minus 60. So dry room becomes important because to produce the environment within the hermetical and envelope is the heart of it all is called the dehumidifier, the desiccant dehumidifier. So fortunately, the desiccant dehumidifier in this country has been in production for now 40 years. I started that in the country. Today, we export that product to more than 80 countries in the world. I'm not talking at the moment on lithium ion, but almost every application, most of the pharma facilities globally, we are involved with them. They are a big user of desiccant dehumidification. Uh, so dehumidification plays a very significant role. And that is called a dehumidifier. So you are seeing three examples now of low dew point dehumidifiers. So there are desiccant dehumidifiers, which are for, we don't call them low anymore. They were also referred to as low dew point. But they were what they called, uh, say, pharmaceuticals, drug manufacturing, effervescent tablets, diagnostic sets, ranging from 10% to 40% relative humidity. Now we are coming to lithium cell production. We need to maintain the relative humidity inside less than half a percent. You can't even fathom what is less than half a percent, how much moisture that would have. So the machine that you're seeing on the left, the height of that is two times the man's height. So you can see how big that machine would be. And that's gone to, or is going to the United States for a lithium battery plant. Uh, then there are research areas. People want to do very quick research, and for that there's a compact dry room as an example. And also, uh, when you go to drying side, little heard or understood and assumed that we'll be importing this is called an NMP recovery plant because for making cathodes and uh, putting that uh, uh, material on the aluminum foil, you use NMP as a solvent. NMP as a solvent. Now, this solvent is very um, hazardous in more ways than one, and you cannot let it go outside into the atmosphere according to regulations. So you need to recover that or incinerate that, whatever way you want to do it. And I'll speak a little bit more later, but then these NMP recovery plants are again using adsorption technologies for which our company is specializing in adsorption technologies. So I'll uh, get into that a little bit later. So as you can see, the atlas, atlas is you are taking care of the dry room, but on the back of it all is the dehumidification equipment. And that dehumidification equipment has to be able to produce the right environment using the least amount of energy, because that's representing 50% of your operating cost. Keep that in mind. And fortunately for us, for India, I'm talking about, we have global patents out of India for two most advanced technologies for producing dehumidification equipment at the lowest energy possible. That is why India is successful in exporting this technology to now leading plants which are coming up for lithium battery production. Because energy is the most significant part of the use production of that. 
And these advanced technologies that we are producing in India for the world, I think is something that we are very proud of. Currently, as we speak, we are, we are discussing with a plant in the United States. Hopefully, they'll decide in our favor next week. And that's a Japanese plant coming up in the US. And if they look at India as a source for this dehumidification equipment, it'll do India very proud. So I think we are there, at least in this segment of the whole supply chain and equipment. Now, why this is important? If you have two dehumidification equipments, and the difference between the two is only 10 kilowatt in operating energy, and since this operates 365 days in a year and 24 by 7, the energy cost is 10 rupees, somewhere it is 12, 13 today, or it is 7 or 8, I've taken an average of 10. You're talking about 7.7 .7 lakhs extra operating cost of saving per annum for 10 kilowatt. And if you capitalize that at the rate of 10%, you're talking about 87 lakhs, or close to about a crore, for only 10 kilowatt difference in the operating cost, because of the operating cost difference. So if you're looking at giga plants and we are already at, let's say, 100 kilowatt or more, and definitely more, as a difference in the energy consumption, you will be looking at so many crores of equipment, uh, of uh, capitalized cost saving, uh, when you go for advanced technologies that are available in India for producing dehumidification equipment, which is the backbone of your dry room, which is the backbone of your lithium ion production. Uh, these dehumidifiers have to be very unique because they themselves have to be hermetically manufactured. So these are welded stainless steel frameworks, as you can see. They're very aesthetically designed as well. And um, they performance they have incorporated a very high performance desiccant rotor, the adsorption medium. This adsorption medium is produced in India, incidentally, by our own company. Why well, I'm going to take a few minutes to explain this to you. Whether it is a company in China which produces the dehumidifier, or a company in Europe that produces the dehumidifier, or a company in America that produces the dehumidifier, it's their own technologies with open source. They still need the desiccant wheel in the configuration that they choose. Today, almost like seven, eight major manufacturers in China who are making dehumidifiers for the explosive business of lithium battery production are all sourcing their desiccant rotors and media from India. That comes from our plant. This is how we are even integrated into the Chinese story. We are supplying to several OEMs in Europe, several OEMs in the United States, so the desiccant wheel or the desiccant media with an adsorption technology is the core of our business and it was not limited to this, it is limited to, it has expanded into many, many areas including VOC concentrators which go into NMP recovery as an example. So this is uh, our patented green, uh, green technology and I'm purposely avoiding the use of our means dry air, but I'm saying it our means as a country. We have that capability today as a country to be able to be a supplier globally. Our plant is being expanded, especially for lithium battery dehumidification equipment. And with the expansion, we should be able to provide at least 1,000 units of this large equipment to the globe. And that would translate into, keying into more than about 150 to 200 gigawatt of capacity building globally. So these are some of our patents that we hold, some examples of installations within India. Um, we've done dry room for uh, VSSC, BHEL, Amar Raja, um, HPCL. Uh, but now I want to take you straight to the dry room. A uh, few factors, since many of you are in lithium battery production, one way or another, someone will say, lithium battery dry room, what do I need to take away from today's discussion? When we specify what we are going to do inside that room, there are a few important considerations that can actually play havoc in the sizing of the equipment. So one is, the number of people that are going to be there in the room itself. 
Each person significantly contributes to the main moisture. Since the room is built in a hermetic way, your main source of moisture within the room is people. And people are giving up moisture. And that is going to be one of your major uh, uh, source of moisture that you need to overcome within that occupied space. You can see, if you want to maintain a dew, dew point of minus 40, uh, minus 30 and there are two people, and you want to maintain minus 40 with four people, your air quantity required to offset that actually goes up five times, the five X. The second most critical item is to specify actually how much dryness do you want in the room, in the dry room. So if you, instead of specifying minus 40, end up specifying minus 50, you go up four times exponentially for the same number of people. So both have a very cascading and compounding effect on the sizing of the equipment, sizing therefore, and therefore the operating cost, the electrical, the first cost. So be very, very careful when you are specifying as a research chemist or whatever it is, how many is the least number of people that I need in the room. That's very important. And also, what is the best acceptable dew point that I want? Uh, sometimes you say, I need 20 degrees C in a room, or I need 18 degrees C. You feel that there is no difference between 18 and 20, so I can specify 18. Or there's no difference between 25 and 20, I can specify 20. But in case of dew point, it makes a huge difference. So therefore, don't be as liberal in your specification of the dew point. Go for what is absolutely essential to get your job done. Uh, this is a compact dry room which can be shipped out um, at a research site, um, literally for startup within 24 hours. These are some examples, testimonials. Okay, uh, there's a nudge here. So these are examples of companies that we have worked with uh, domestically, internationally, BYD, Schlumberger, Excite. NMP Recovery, that's where I wanted to spend, a, a, uh, I've already explained why NMP Recovery is important. But uh, this is where it is. Uh, you actually take the VOCs uh, and take them through the concentrators, put them in the equipment, and this is actually miscible with water, so what you've recovered is NMP along with water, and you need a solvent distillation uh, plant at, at the end of it, and you can recover your NMP, meet the pollution standards, as well as give it back to for reuse. All these are now being made in India. Uh, for our company now a little bit, we are in adsorption technologies, we, have, um, we are different parts of the world, we have some very, very interesting technologies, we make some product in Switzerland, we are the only company in the world which can measure moisture in materials, in line, down to 5 ppm, and that's one of our best products, and this year the business globally is going up like a roof, all Lego plants coming up in the world will have our sensors made by us in Switzerland for all their plants in the world. Thank you.